Hello Shane, hello Fight Tips. My name is Stefan Kesting from GravelArts.com, SelfDefenseTutorials.com, my friend and training partner Richie Yip, and today the rear naked choke. How to do it, if you don't know how to do it already, and how to make it much more powerful if you're already doing some grappling. The rear naked choke, this choke here, you see it all the time in MMA, you see it all the time in Jiu Jitsu, it's a really, really, really important move to do, but a lot of people do it wrong. So let's hit the ground, and I'll show you how to do it properly. So like I said, yeah. so you can do the rear naked from standing, from the ground with your hooks in, with the person's belly down. The easiest way to teach it though is with one guy kneeling and the other guy right behind him. So just to make it a little bit easier for you to see, I'll rip the shirt off, fight style, and here I am. So typically I'm going to start from behind my opponent with an over and an under. This hand comes under his armpit, this hand comes over his shoulder, this hand makes a fist, and this hand grabs onto the fist. It's the ball at the end of the, the rope, that's where this hand goes. This is from a control position on the ground. If you want to go straight to the choke from a standing position perhaps, you'll skip the first couple of steps. But I think it's important to learn all of the uh, steps. So we're here. The top hand makes a fist, the bottom hand grabs the uh, meat of the hand here, or the wrist. The reason is, this is the killing hand. This is the hand that's going to go to the neck. If he knows what he's doing, he's going to try grabbing that hand. If I'm grabbing my hands together like this, and he grabs my wrist, now it's really hard to get that up around his neck. If I cover the area that he's going to grab, he can only grab higher on my forearm, which makes it easier to sink that. So in the next step, I want to take my hand that's under his armpit and bring it up here so I can start choking him here, right? The rear naked choke is done with both my hands on top of his shoulders. Trouble is, if I just go like this, He's going to grab this hand. And if he grabs that hand, now it's going to be really difficult to get it free and actually choke him. So this is actually a two-step movement. Movement one, I grab the shoulder. I go from here, and I grab the shoulder. Now when he pulls my hand here, at least it's anchored on something. Turn halfway here, please, Richie. So I'm grabbing here. When he pulls, it's not the strength of my bicep. Pull, pull, pull. He's going to pull my hand away. If I anchor my hand on the shoulder, it's solid. So then, that's the first part of the movement. Second part of the movement, this hand comes out, and I clasp my hands together. Watch Richie pull my hand off of his neck here. Go ahead. Pull, 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 pull. That's because this forearm is up. He's created a couple inches of room in front of his throat. No good for me. Good for him, bad for me. So as he begins to pull, I drop this hand down. Now it creates a backstop here. Pull, please. I don't give him a lot of room. Now, the next step, I want to start moving my hands into this configuration. So I've gone here, I've grabbed the shoulder, I've gone here, I've dropped this. The classic way to teach this is to shoot the hand through and then come here. In the old days, they used to say, shoot here and then brush his hair. That's actually a mistake, because if I go here, he's going to grab that wrist, and now I can't pull it free. And now I can't choke him. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to slide this, for, this hand up my forearm like this, but this hand goes directly behind his head. It goes here. Sometimes I call this the Italian driver because you're, uh, you're telling people what you think of their driving. One, two, Italian driver. Except this hand goes directly behind his head. He never sees it. It never goes in front of his face where he can grab it. Here. Now, I'm going to squeeze in. I'm going to see how my elbows are a little bit apart. I want to bring them together. Ideally, one, two, three. I want to bring my elbows over top of each other. Here. I'm also going to pull back and I'm also going to, if I want to, I can inhale to make it tighter. Some people say to push forward with this hand. That's incorrect. This hand, in fact, should be thumb up. It makes it much tighter. If I'm hand down, palm down, it's easy for him to reach over the top of his head and pull my hand off of his head. For some reason, if I go thumb up here, that's much harder. It fits right in the space, right in the curve at the back of the neck. Now I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to inhale, I'm going to scissor my elbows over top of each other, and I'm going to choke them out. Just turn here. One other common mistake that people make, especially in the heat of the moment, 
It's doing it like this. Do you see how my forearm is across the front of Richie's throat? Yes, this can work, but this is an air choke. It causes a ton of pain, but it's not going to put him asleep as fast as adjusting here. See how my elbow is right in line with his nose and his chin? This is much better because now I'm attacking the arteries on the side of the neck. One more time the steps. We start with the over under. Grab the shoulder, pull my hand out, palm to palm, elbow down. Italian driver, come up behind the head. Make sure my elbow's lined up with his chin and his nose. Now I'm going to hide my own head if I need to. I'm going to squeeze and I should get a tap out of him or unconsciousness pretty quickly. It's a very humane way to deal with somebody. As opposed to punching somebody in the head or kneeing them in the face until they fall unconscious, you're putting them asleep with a choke as long as you're monitoring them and let go when they actually pass out. You've just rendered somebody unconscious in a relatively safe, relatively humane kind of way. I think that everybody needs to know some jiu-jitsu. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And no matter what kind of martial arts you do, good luck with your training.